you just set yourself on this cushion. This cushion, this cushion right now, like, Lord, help me, Jesus. I just, you got to get her off of me, Jesus. It don't make no sense. Nobody checked to see the structural integrity of these pews before you sat down. Because most of you are sitting in a seat that you sit in every week, which means you think that seat belongs to you. I'm preaching good, D. You think it belongs to you and won't tithe. Just free seats. This is mine. This is my husband. He's sitting here. He parking the car. The kids is coming. This, this whole area, this is ours. <laughs> Nobody checked to see if it had enough capacity to carry and hold all that weight. But you set yourself down because you believed the pew could hold your weight. So don't tell me, unless I see it, I won't believe it. You breathe in air. Can you see it? I'm just trying to help somebody because you choose when to believe and when not to believe. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Unless I see it, I won't believe it. Yeah, really, I tell you what. You don't see gravity. Go on, jump off the top of this building and tell me gravity is not real. I make sure to see, they sing real pretty at your service. Anybody with the strength to jump, just jump. How come you didn't stay up? I'm sorry. Gravity? But you can't see it. So therefore, it's, it's not real. It is real? Why? I can't see it. So the evidence is that you're on the ground. So even though I can't talk to gravity, I can't attack gravity, I can't arrest gravity, I can't confront gravity, I can't ask gravity questions, I'm still bound by it. Yet you have an eternal God, immortal God, invincible God, all-powerful God, who has never been seen by human eyes, but wants to have relationship with you. And he will hear you when you pray. And he will respond to his children. And you have access to that God. And yet some of us still don't believe. You don't see atoms, but you're made of them. And beyond atoms are quarks and leptons, the smallest particles known to man. An atom is infinitesimally small, but a quark is a hundred million times smaller than an atom. And that's the smallest piece of material substance that we can observe. But the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, beyond the smallest particle of matter, there's another piece that's smaller that you can't see with a microscope that you're created from. It's a word. I need some help. Y'all got to pray me through. Every human being here is a word that God spoke. Once he spoke the word, the quarks and the leptons and the atoms showed up, the protons and the neutrons and the charge that sparked the, the arrival of the zygote and the egg and the seed connected and you began to gestate and build and develop over nine months and the only reason you ever made it out the womb is because God said that you had to. You are here because God willed for you to be here. That's why you have a name because everything with a name has a purpose and every purpose comes from heaven and if you're in here right now and you got a name you ought to bless God because there's nothing the devil can do about you. You are God's will. Now, I need a couple of crazy praisers. I need somebody to throw something. Everybody say this out loud. I am a word. Uh, I don't know if you meant it. Look at somebody. Look at them with a little attitude, little, little, little bass in your chest. I'm a word. I'm 
I'm a word. So watch what you say to me. Everybody in here is a word. What's your son's name? Xander. That's the word. What's your name? Jason. Linton. And then you married Alicia. She had another last name. But then she took your last name. Because that's what they're supposed to do when daddy comes home. 